I'd like to call this uh, meeting to order. Uh, could you do a roll call vote for me, please? Kim? Karen Anderson. Here. Tammy Hines. Here. John Hall. Here. Greg Meyer. Scott Milkamp. Here. Greg O'Connor. Here. Lisa Schumacher. Here. Great. We have a quorum on to item two, public comments. Um, do we have anything Not at this time? Me. Any, anything from those folks here? Nothing at this point. Uh, item number three, correspondence. Did we have board correspondence? Did you see anything? There wasn't anything, I don't think. No board correspondence? Awesome. On to the consent agenda. Items four and five, do you want to address that? Yeah, um, Mr. Grody? Really quickly, we had some resignations. We had Kaylee Hentis, um, and then three additional ones that got added to the agenda. That included Rebecca Fields, who's a cook, Brooks Demesian for the head basketball, boys basketball coach in stipend, and Jason Mathenia, head boys uh, soccer coach for the stipend. For the employments, we've got Jeremy Bleckley, who's the recommendation for the um, assistant principal at the high school. That'd be a two-year contract. Um, he comes from Chester. He's been there since 2007, started there as a teacher, got moved up to a dean of students, moved to assistant principal and the athletic director. Um, so really he's moving from an assistant principal here. Uh, it was a, a nice process. They did two rounds of interviews. There was some tough decisions, but uh, that's who the committee decided on, and so that's our recommendation. Um, excited to have him on board. Uh, Kimberly Luntz, who is Lintz, I'm sorry, is the reading going to be the reading specialist for Parkview. Uh, that's taking over the resignation for the reading specialist that left. She is a fifth grade special education teacher, so you'll see in the vacancies, we've got a special education mm -hmm. teacher posted that's replacing her. We've got the uh, Eagle View custodian who's uh, retiring, still posted, and then we've got the three resignations: the cook and the two stipend head coaches positions being posted. We'll do the uh, paraprofessional as needed over the summer when we get a better look at the numbers and whatnot. Um, we also have our summer workers, and we're asking for the same number that we normally get, um, student custodians, painters, groundskeepers, and whatnot. Um, I don't think that there were any questions or anything on this, and so the recommendation is to approve it as presented. And is there any questions on the consent agenda from the board? Will you be Lisa? providing uh, like a copy of the resume to us? Sure. Yes, it's a, it's yeah. Not today, but right. yeah, I can get that to you. Any other questions on the consent agenda? Seeing none, I'd entertain a motion to uh, accept the consent agenda as presented. So move. A motion by Karen Anderson, second by? Second. All second. Second by? Greg O'Connor. Roll. Roll call vote for me, please, Kim. Karen Anderson. Yes. Tammy Hines. Yes. John Long. Yes. Greg Meyer, not here. Scott Wilkins. Yes. Greg O'Connor. Aye. Yes. Great. Motion carries. On to item six communications, reports, and presentations. Administrative reports. Enrollment is in your packet. Uh, next item on the agenda. Ms. Hughes? Hi. Hi. Thanks for having me. I've got some items that I want to share about CMS. First of all, we are excited that grades have improved dramatically given the return to school full day. And compared to the end of first semester, we have reduced the number of failing grades by 50%. We meaning students, teachers, and the hours I think that they're in the school building have contributed to success. So we feel really good about the trend and we're still working hard to help remaining students who, who, need, who need some assistance as the semester ends. I'm excited that CMS is, is, has filled out paperwork to get two new courses next year. The first is called Cultures, which it's funny that Profe Atwell's here tonight because she used to teach that. And also a new technology class that would be taught by Mr. Schlichting. That's for more discussion later. We, are, we at CMS are planning extensively for spring testing. We have MAP at the end of April, IAR in the middle of May, and we're also including the ISA, the science test in our plans. We wanna thank PTA who's offered CHS Parkview and CMS's upcoming. The Kona Ice Truck has been a really big hit 
for students. And I want to thank Jeannie Rice and our CMS Student Council who's also playing the donut day after IAR testing is over. Kevin Scheibe, the EMA Public Safety Director, visited CMS and other buildings recently to review safety protocol. For we, at CMS, we looked at fire and tornado, and I really appreciated his time and input regarding our procedures. We're also looking forward to some student recognition in May. Ms. Langang's going to lead the movement of multiple soaring eagle awards to end the year. And we're also looking forward to the eighth grade end of year awards at our celebration scheduled for May 27th. And then all schools, Eagle View Parkview, CMS, and CHS is doing it a little differently, but we've all started communicating with families regarding the possibility of attending our summer learning program which is scheduled to begin on June 7th to end on June 24th. And we've agreed on a Monday through Thursday approach from 9 a.m. to noon. So we started, we've called parents. Uh, we're also sending a letter. And then I wanna thank April Becker, our transportation director, who's already working a little bit on busing. So we're hopeful that we'll have some students in the building to help build some skills that they've been lacking, possibly due to remote learning and or the, the pandemic. So we're excited about our summer plans. Great, thank you, Ms. Jules. You're welcome. Dr. Castelli. Ms. Jules gave the, gave the assistant superintendent's report. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll just expand a little bit on the um, curriculum that she, was, she mentioned. So you have seen uh, two proposals. Cultures is uh, bringing back. Cultures was there before I started. Um, some of you may have had kids who've gone through that. It's always been in sixth grade. Um, it went away because we couldn't staff it, and it wasn't something that we needed to hire additional staff to do. Um, but it resurfaced because we do have somebody that can fill that role. In addition, um, we have always struggled in the sixth grade with um, the class sizes and various hours because they don't take electives in the same manner as seventh and eighth graders do. And so you will find that some periods throughout the day, the class sizes in sixth grade are not ideal. And in particular, um, the music class, uh, the choir class, the class size can be 70 plus, and we're looking to maybe minimize that. Uh, so we're hopeful that adding that back into the schedule with somebody who's eager um, to take that on will be, a, will be a benefit in many different areas. We won't need to hire additional staff. It shouldn't cost it anything in terms of you know materials per se however what will be different is that we are actually going to work on an actual curriculum document instead of just an outline that frequently i'm sure profe could sometimes tell you that we're kind of left to flounder a little bit so put a little bit more structure in that and we have miss hules and the teacher uh, amanda hellman uh, willing to work on doing that to get that ready so that's one that we're asking for your approval on. And the second one is the digital um, technology class. And basically uh, what that is, is it won't require additional staffing either. Um, it is not, it is using the same population and just putting them in a different class. So what we have found over the years, it's been a problem we've discussed and I'm very pleased that they came up with a solution um, because we were trying to figure it out for years. So if you have a, have a student who has an IEP, or they are an RTI, they have to give up one of their elective slots um, in order to generally take study hall support. And so when they do that, oftentimes they are out of the wheel of electives and they miss technology. And so then what happens is when they come to seventh grade, maybe they're interested and then that's the one they pick, but they've missed fifth and sixth foundations and it's really difficult for them to catch up. And so the teacher is trying to differentiate to make that happen but when the rest of the kids can type and they know how to do Word documents, to jump into coding and other things becomes quite the challenge. And then what they found looking at the data is that many of those students this year, not many, a, a, a good percentage elected to withdraw from the class because they felt overwhelmed and join into a study hall kind of environment. Um, and hopefully what this would allow is them to get those skills still that are critical for their success, and then if they want to jump in later, they can do so. So those are two recommendations that we have, I think, that would benefit the students there at, C at CMS. So um, Angie touched on the summer school, so we're excited about having that roll out, and I think that's about it. Great. Thank you, Dr. Costelli. Mm -hmm. On to item four as a superintendent's report, Mr. Grody. Um, we did have a FOIA request. That was the Smart Procure 
it, it, you know, they do that quarterly, and so it was just that time again. Um, but as far as my report goes, this year is coming to an end. Thinking back to the beginning of the year, it, it feels like it's you know almost like a dog year. It's been seven years packed into this one. Um, most of our action items tonight are actually for next year, getting ready for next year and really looking ahead at next year. Um, we're going to be using the ESSER funds. We've already wrote the grant. The ESSER funds, the extra emergency funds for the COVID is what's paying for the summer school to catch kids up and everything like that. And so um, that's some good news. But as we uh, finish this year, I want to remind everybody, you know, we've got prom where we've got a court and we've got other end of the year celebrations occurring to the best of our ability. And I say to the best of our ability because um, I really appreciate those that are stepping up and providing opportunities for our students outside of the school day because we can only do what we can do. We have to follow the rules and the regs. Um, we're held to those rules as a public body and like it or not, we have to follow them. The quarantine is the, the big one. Um, there's nothing that an administrator, you get a pit in your stomach when you find out you've got a, a, a positive kid and you've got to go to the seating charts and, and find that and make all of these phone calls because it's, it's just, it's so frustrating to have a healthy kid stay home, but it's what we are forced to do. Um, you're quarantined for 14 days. You are quarantined for 14 days. You can return to school per the IDPH after 10 days if you've had no uh, symptoms. You're still supposed to be quarantined for those 14 days, which means after school events, you can't return to until 14 days later. And, and trust me, we've had conversations with John Wagner, and it's just it's frustrating, especially like for band. You've got a child that can return to school after 10 days. He can sit in the band room, and he can take his mask off and play his instrument, but he's not going to be able to attend the, uh, the concert two days later, which is more separate in a larger space. It's just why? And, and the answer is because those are the rules and we have to follow them. Um, and, and we advocate for the kids, but it's, it's also we have rules that we have to follow and it's frustrating. After spring break, we had an uptick. We had some kids that were positive and it caused us a lot of quarantines. We're going to have prom, or there's being proms being held. We aren't having it, but proms are being held. Other events are being held. We've got the end of the year festivities going on, and I just want to encourage all parents to be extremely diligent. If there's any thoughts that someone in your household is sick, please keep your child home. Because if your child comes to school and they are sick and there is a positive test, there's a lot of families that get affected by that. And so um, just be diligent with those uh, self-certifications and make sure we're doing what's, what's, what's best for all the kids involved. Um, we're going to get through this year. Uh, I know that remote learning will only be offered for those that have medical needs next year. The state has pretty much laid that down. Um, regarding quarantine, I'd like to tell you that it'll be over. However, I can't tell you that it'll be over. Um, yeah, you, all the administration really hopes so too, just like the parents do. Um, that's going to be the hard one to, to, to get past. And, you know, I have spoken with our legislatures about it and, and whatnot. It's just, it's, it's um, I don't know how to fix it. So if anybody knows a solution, I'd be willing to help them work on it over the summer. Because I do not want to have to quarantine kids. It's just, it's, it's frustrating. So, um, but that's the report. This year is almost over and next year is about to start. Thank you. I have a uh, question. Do we have summer school for other classes or grades besides middle school? Oh, yeah. Um, okay. All grades. Uh, all, all, all awesome. grades. It's more credit recovery at the high school level. Okay. And then we've always done the extended school year for the uh, special ed students, which we will continue to have. But this is really for the, um, the other students that there might have been a gap. And they're going to be using the assessments to pinpoint exactly who those are. Beautiful. I have a question also. Um, what's our status on teachers being vaccinated? Do we know a percentage of teachers that are vaccinated? Have they all been offered? They've all been offered. Okay. And I believe at this point, um, I don't think there's lines like there used to be. I don't know. But I don't, I don't, I don't know who's been vaccinated, who's not been vaccinated. Um, there's no scarlet V that I make them wear or anything. It's just. I think the average is 
Any other questions for Mr. Grody? Seeing none, let's move on to item seven, items for action. The first one is the approval of the consolidated district plan. Yeah, and you had a copy of that uh, document. Basically, whenever you do your grants, there's all these federal, federal requirements and everything, and they've taken all the requirements from all the different grants and put it into this one consolidated district plan. Um, we killed several trees printing that out for you. But the recommendation is to approve it. As you can see, it's it's very similar to what it was last year. Um, questions, concerns, comments. The recommendations to approve. Any it. questions on the consolidated district plan from the board? Seeing none, I'd entertain a motion to uh, accept the uh, consolidated district plan as presented. So moved. A motion by Karen Anderson. A second by. Second. Second by John Long. Can you do a roll call vote for me, please, Kim? Tammy Pines? Yes. John Long? Yes. Greg Meyer? Yes. Scott Middlesamp? Yes. Greg O'Connor? Aye. Is this your number? Yes. Karen Anderson? Yes. Great. Motion carries. It's on to the uh, item B, approval of summer tuck pointing project. Yeah, and this project includes tuck pointing of the middle school Eagle View, Park View. It's going to power wash the middle school and put a sealant on there so the black uh, substance that grows on that beautiful white brick does not grow back. Um, we are also going to be power washing it with the recommendation, the Eagle View um, masonry. There's, we had, uh, I believe, four bidders. The facility committee, Mr. Myers and Mr. O'Connor, um, reviewed the bid specs, reviewed the bids talked about it with the architects and uh, the recommendation is that we give it to the lowest bidder which was the James G. Stat Tuck Pointing Company. They are the company that did the high school last summer and they did a great job. We worked well with them. We liked them. Um, they were the lowest bidder and we're recommending that we do all the alternates. Questions, concerns, comments? No, but I thank you for providing the bid tabulation to all of us. That was great. So thank you for the committee that did all of that. Yeah, it looks like we had five bidders, which is it was five. Okay. It, it's um, you know when we've gone out to bid for a lot of things, it's been difficult to get bids. So it's good to see that many. We went early. Um, I can't remember if it was Mr. Myers or Mr. O'Connor that kind of said, you know, you go early and uh, they haven't lined up their summer work yet. You get more bids, and yeah. I agreed with that. And so good. we benefit from it. Well, what's amazing is the difference between the bids. <laughs> yeah. Know, yeah. Exact same <laughs> it's mind-boggling. So, any other questions about uh, the tuck pointing project? Seeing none, I'd entertain a motion that we uh, accept James G. Stat tuck pointing with all alternates as being the lowest and best bid. I'll make that motion. Motion by Greg Meyer, second by. Second. Second by Lisa Schumacher. Roll call vote for me, please, Kim. John Long. Yes. Greg Meyer. Yes. Scott Middlecamp. Yes. Greg O'Connor. Aye. Lisa Schumacher. Yes. Karen Anderson. Yes. Tammy Hines. Yes. On to item C, approval of non-reemployment of non-tenured teachers. This is one of those um, no administrator likes to say, but we had four teachers, uh, Molly, Bartels, Vicki Bradley, Charlotte Romano, and Taylor Zimmer, who were our remote instructors. They were our remote teachers. They did a fabulous job. They're good teachers. Uh, we don't have a position for them next year because we're not doing the remote instruction. Uh, I will say publicly that, that if we have a position, they would definitely be strong contenders for a job. I think that they were great educators. Um, but this is just an honorable dismissal because those positions are no longer. So um, they were hired to fill those roles, and they did admirably at it, so. 
Any questions from the board on this item? Seeing none, I'd entertain a motion to uh, approve the honorable dismissals as presented. I'll make the motion. Motion by Tammy Hines, second by? Second. second by Lisa Schumacher. Roll call vote for me, please, Kim. Greg Meyer? Yes. Scott Middlecamp? Yes. Greg O'Connor? Aye. Lisa Schumacher? Yes. Karen Anderson? Yes. Tammy Hines? Yes. John Long? Yes. Great, motion carries on to item D. Approval of non-tenured teaching staff for 2021-2022. This is one of those um, yearly things. You've got a list of the first year teachers, the second year teachers, the third year, the second year, third year, fourth year, fifth year teachers. The, the tenured teachers will be Chelsea, Chelsea Adair, uh, Jessica M, Amanda Bedard, Michelle, it's Michelle Erke. Um, we congratulate them and welcome them with tenure to our district. Um, and then there's just the update for who's still in that pipeline as they move toward that. Great. We ask the board to approve that. Any questions on our non-tenured teachers? Seeing none, I'd entertain a motion to approve the non-tenured teaching staff for 2021 and 2022 as presented. So moved. Motion by Karen Anderson, second by? I'll second that. Second by John Long. Roll call vote for me, please, Kim. Scott Middlecamp. Yes. Greg O'Connor. Aye. Lisa Schumacher. Yes. Karen Anderson. Yes. Tammy Hines. Yes. John Long. Yes. Greg Meyer. Yes. On to item E for our annual IHSA membership fee. Do you want to? This is another one of those yearly um, duties, and it, my experience for the last 13 years. Um, as a superintendent, I've always recommended that we approve us being a member of IHSA and that IHSA has waived the membership fees. This year, due to COVID and the lack of post-season play, IHSA is hurt financially. This is the first year in the last 13 that um, they are asking for us to be members and pay our, our association dues at $1,600. I can tell you that um, you know, if you think about it, for at least 14 years, you're paying one year out of that. It allows us to compete and have our kids compete in a lot of those extracurriculars. And I mean, a lot of, you know, it's not just the athletics, the band competitions, all of the other clubs are also IHSA sponsored event that your membership gets you. So um, the recommendation is to approve it with the understanding that there will be uh, a fee this year. It's, I don't want to say new, but it's something that they've always been able to waive in the past. And we look forward to postseason games resuming. Any questions from the board on the IHSA annual membership? Seeing none, I'd entertain a motion to uh, accept the recommendation for the annual membership fee of $1,625 for the IHSA. So moved. Motion by Greg O'Connor, second by. Yes, second. Second by Karen Anderson. Roll call vote for me, please, Kim. Greg O'Connor. Aye. Lisa Schumacher. Yes. Karen Anderson. Yes. Tammy Hines. Yes. John Long. Yes. Greg Meyer. Yes. Scott Littlecamp. Yes. Motion carries on to item F, uh, the new course that we just talked about a few minutes ago, Cultures. You yeah, were... we've talked about it um, extensively. It's for the sixth grade. The recommendation is that we approve it as presented. Questions, Any... concerns on it? Any questions from the board? I actually have one. So yeah. when we get into culture, I think it's a great idea, but now we're also in the realm these days of politics, which keeps encroaching into the school. Are we keeping politics out of this? It's not a, in it's, the past, it's been more along the line. So it's, if you think about it kind of like a, a preliminary to our foreign language, if you look at 6.60, um, which is the policy regarding curriculum, it does contain various things related to cultures. So if you want to see what the state and what you guys approved in, January of last year. We're going to sit down and, and obviously write that, but in the past it, had, it was not about that. It's, it's literally about the cultures of the world and how language is, a, you know, used and it's, yeah. I think the overall purpose of the course will be to keep the interest for Spanish and German in the Yes. Okay. That's really the overall purpose. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, yeah. Appreciate it's the not, It's not designed to be related to what. There will be no political. Yeah. 
Yeah. That's okay. what I want to hear. Thank yes. you. Yeah, I, don't, I don't remember when when we ended up dropping this. Oh, it was, it was, it was probably uh, maybe ten years ago. Yeah. I would say. I, I think it's important to learn. I know we've had it. Yeah. I think it's important to teach different cultures and different yeah. communities, but. It is one of those items that could easily drop into a political thing. So that was sure. We're going to stay in the framework of Spanish and German since those are the languages that we offer. Mm -hmm. um, we met with German teachers and Spanish teachers. Um, we weeks ago, we brainstormed and we had some really good feedback from them. We're excited about what that might do to promote the numbers, especially in German, but also Spanish. Thank you. Any other questions about cultures? Seeing none, I'd uh, entertain a motion to Approve the addition of the cultures course at CMS as presented. Motion. motion by Lisa Schumacher, second by. I'll second. Second by Tammy Hines. Roll call vote for me, please, Kim. Lisa Schumacher? Yes. Karen Anderson? Yes. Tammy Hines? Yes. John Mall? Yes. Greg Meyer? Yes. Scott Milkin? Yes. Greg O'Connor? Aye. On to the next item on the agenda, item G, approval of a new course at Columbia Middle School, Digital Technology. Again, this was one of those courses that we just, talked, to, about? We just talked about, and the recommendation is to approve it as presented. Any questions about digital technology from the board? It too will not have any politics. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing no questions, I'd entertain a motion to uh, approve the addition of the digital technology course at CMS. So moved. Motion by John Long, second by? I'll second. Second by Greg Meyer. Roll call vote for me, please. Karen Anderson? Yes. Tammy Hines? Yes. John Long? Yes. Greg Meyer? Yes. Scott Middlecamp? Yes. Greg O'Connor? Hi. And Lisa Schumacher? Yes. On to the next item. We are. We need to find some time to schedule a special meeting. So uh, uh, both counties needed some time to certify the election. Uh, they needed to tabulate the um, absent, yeah, the absentee ballots, mail-in votes, and uh, so we need to schedule a meeting at some point after on or after the twentieth. After the twentieth. Yes. Preferably the week of the twenty-sixth. So Tuesday night, the 27th, is the pay TA membership meeting, member meeting. So um, preferably not on the 27th. So uh, how is the evening of the 28th look for everybody or the 29th? I'm getting a hand signal. Uh, the 29th will be. Okay. <laughs> we, the, the evening of the 28th, Wednesday the 28th, is that good for everybody here? Good. Good? Good? Um, do we want to do this at customary 7 o'clock or do we want to do 6? Greg? It'll be short. It'll Seven. be short. So. 7 minutes. 7? Doesn't matter, man. Seven good? Okay, let's do it at seven. So seven o'clock on uh, Wednesday, April 28th will be that, um, that meeting. And do we have anything else? I know we're working on a, a time for... We're gonna have the Illinois Association of School Boards to come in yep. and do a um, uh, uh, roles and responsibility training for the board members that um, will be in closed session will be kind of a strategic planning type of thing um, I also was on the phone today with Barney Mundorf and uh, Calvin Davis through the ROE is setting up a, um, a, a new member training for uh, it's going to be at Redbud so it's going to be an in-person training that would qualify for some of your needs and so I'm going to get that information from Kelton and I'll forward it on to everybody um, but everybody's starting to get new boards and is, is, is Barney going to be one of the presenters? Or He's presenting, presenting at the, at the oh. red light, yeah. Yeah, that's, the, that'd be good. IAS 
IASB has uh, several new board sessions as well that might just be overlapping information, but always good to, yeah. to uh, engage in those. And there's a whole, this one course is being taught several times. The meeting that they do with Redbud Red is, is very special. It's, it's very good. I mean, it, it was very, very good. And it's a small group, so it's a little bit more personable and kind of hands-on than the big ones. So do we have a, anything for executive session? No, sir. No? So that was a placeholder. So there's nothing for executive session today. Uh, nothing for board president's prerogative. On to item 11, adjournment. Um, I entertain a motion to adjourn. So move. Motion by Karen Anderson. Second by? Second. Second by Greg Rapana. We do need a roll call vote since we're still meeting this way. Penny Hines? Yes. John Mall? Yes. Greg Meyer? Yes. Scott Middlecamp? Yes. Greg O'Connor? Aye. Lisa Schumacher? Yes. And Karen Anderson? Uh -huh. Yes. Motion carries. Uh, we can all go home. Thank you, everybody, and thanks for joining. 730.